So now I'm gonna remove the hind quarter. What I'm gonna do is make my first incision up the back of the leg to my dorsal cut. I'm gonna remove that hide, and then I'm gonna remove the meat off the hind quarter. This is the gutless method, so I'm gonna just do this before gutting it. So I'm cutting all the way up the back, and then connecting with my dorsal cut here. The hind quarter goes like this, and so I'll be then be removing the hide and then removing the meat. When I remove the hide on the hind quarter, I just start pulling a little tip from the inside, cut toward the back end here, nice incision, and then toward the middle, little incision, and these are gonna be our hand holds that we can pull the hide off with. Start skinning. I always try to work with the animals back uphill. It tends to be easier to work, easier to keep things out of the dirt, and then just easier on holding things up as well. When you're working the opposite way, gravity's working against you and it's not as easy, especially by yourself. So if you ever have to do this by yourself, then you don't need somebody to hold it for you. You can work and not worry about cutting your finger. At this point, I'm not gonna remove the hind quarter until I get the hide completely skinned out around it. Removing the hind quarter is two parts. You first have to cut off the meat on the top part of the quarter, and then you can come underneath and cut off the rest as, as you use force to push forward. So I'm gonna set this leg down, and I like it to rest naturally. So the way that the hip joint sits is kind of a dish that's faced out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run my knife right along that bone to the top, and, you, and it'll follow this bone down and around. Now this hip bone comes back out up this way, so I go up and around, straight back, and then down. You just want to be careful, make sure you don't puncture the gut bag here and get our hand under there. And we just feel for that hip bone. And then you just follow your markers. You follow this flat bone all the way around up to the top. Now, we've hit that other part of the hip bone, so I'm gonna cut down. And just keep on the bone on the bottom side. Pretty much can't go wrong by doing that. Follow your marker, down. Okay. Now what you'll do is as you pull this forward, you'll find this ball joint, run your knife along the joint, and always do it toward the back so you don't accidentally slip into you the paunch. Okay, now that we've cut the top of it, now we're gonna go on the back side, along that hip bone as well, toward the ball joint. Now it's really removed from the ball joint, and cut, and then as I rotate it as much clockwise as possible, to kind of keep the meat from falling on the ground if I'm by myself. Now I'm gonna pull up and finish my last cut. So get everything, then rotate counterclockwise up, hold up, make your final cut, pull the hind quarter off. A lot of people get too bogged down in the details. All you're doing, the first few steps you're doing is just removing large muscle groups. As I'm butchering, anything that isn't necessarily a big piece or cut, I remove to the side because that can go in our grind. Aside from, you know, maybe some extra fat or this fascia or connective tissue, all this silver skin, that stuff's not going to be used, but any other little pieces of meat I'll retain to the side and that'll go into our grind pile. As I clean this up, what we're gonna to start to see is the lines that separate the muscle groups. So here we've got a muscle group that's split. You can't really see it until you start to clean it up. And all these muscles will then end up being separated and that's gonna be the basis of our cuts. For me, I like to butcher easy and I like to butcher the way that I like to cook. So I like to try to keep a lot of whole pieces, a lot of whole cuts and I freeze them that way. It's a lot faster in the butcher process. It's easier to clean up and it's just the way that I do it. We're just gonna follow the lines that are already there and start removing the different 
cuts of meat off of this hind quarter. And just start following these lines and removing different pieces of meat. Cut this one out. We'll go into burger. So you got your sirloins and your rounds. And we'll separate those out. Once I've taken all the cuts off the top of this, you can see I've removed three main muscle groups. Now I'm gonna flip it over and just follow this around in the same principle, removing it along the lines that essentially are already there. Now that we got most of the top of the hind quarter removed, now we just have the shank left. So you can do different things with the shank. You can just remove this and make it into your grind, or you can cut the shank with the bone in, make osabuco, or you could just leave the shank, cut it, and cook the shank as is. It's a really good cut. These cuts actually slow cook really well. So I like to, I prefer to just cut these, keep them together, but I'll show you how to bone it out as well. You just follow the lines, remove it from the bone around this bone here, and you just follow the bone and remove the shank off of there. Same process, just following the separation of the cuts. There are there's separation of muscles. So there you have it. We've got the hind quarter boned out and we have all our muscle groups separated over here. I'm gonna show you how to cut those into steaks or get ready for packaging. So we'll have a little bit of burger grind in there and then we'll have our major steaks out of the hind quarter cuts.